let's talk about bubbles, but let's come in if we can through Tesla, because you've talked some about Tesla in the past. I mean, last time I checked, I think the market cap is something like 40 times what it was four years ago. Uh, is Tesla a bubble? Yes, that's pretty easy. I, and having said that, I'm the proud owner of a Model 3, and I, I do think they're magnificent vehicles, and I think Tesla has done extraordinarily well. But if you go back into the life cycle of the fangs, a Tesla is many multiples of the price to sales ratio that they were at this stage in their lives. And they have been brilliantly successful. So Tesla is A, assuming it will be brilliantly successful, and B, assuming it will be, in addition to that, multiples as successful as the other fangs. And they are some of the great companies in the history of capitalism. So, so this is a, a big ask. Yeah, I'm always reluctant to say it might be different this time, but let me ask that question. Could it be different this time when it comes to Tesla? Because it is at the crosshairs of a fundamental technological transformation to electric vehicles and a real fight for the climate globally, a part, an important part of that. So is it possible that is different? There's a major transformation going on here that's bigger than what we've seen before. I think if you were defending the fangs, you would say in each case that they represented, like Amazon, a, a, a crucial fork in the road on retailing. If you were looking at Facebook and, and uh, Netflix, all, all of them represent these breakout major changes, disruptive changes. And uh, I'm very grateful for Tesla as a dedicated green that they have pioneered uh, EVs. But now in phase two, every, every great automobile company, all the Mercedes and, and the BMWs and so on, and, and the VWs are all gearing up uh, to go electric. And, we, and that, that owes a lot to Tesla. But now in phase two, they're going to have to have some serious competition and, and to live up to the expectations of the price uh, will be impossible. It's interesting you mentioned the other auto companies because in looking at Tesla, I wonder how much of the valuation that's being put in the stock right now is really dependent upon it being almost by itself. That is to say, a very large moat around the company and how defensible that. And also the question is, what about disruption of Tesla? I think you're involved actually in a company, Quantum Scope, that in success on the battery side could actually disrupt Tesla itself. Absolutely. There are new technologies come along all the time, particularly in uh, solid state lithium. And um, many, many things can go wrong with Tesla. I think they're a very fast moving company and they'll handle that kind of problem. And they'll be worth a lot of money. The question only is, has, has it discounted uh, 50 years into the future rather than five or 10? And I think it probably has. So, so speaking more broadly, you've said that we're in something, I think you called it an epic bubble right now. Uh, I think you've been very careful to say, I'm not going to predict when it ends. I'm just going to say that it does end. What's going to bring it to an end? The thing about the great bubbles, 1929, Japan, no, no one knows after all these years exactly why the bubble peaked. You can say with hindsight it peaked at the point, of course, of maximum euphoria. So there was no hint of... of darkness at the end of the tunnel. Uh, everything looked absolutely splendid as the market peaked. And of course, as long as it looks absolutely splendid, everybody is happy. The, the thing about the great bubbles is how intensely do people buy into the idea that it can never break, that prices will never decline. The housing bubble of 2005, 2006 in America was a brilliant bubble in that description. You had people going out and buying a second house to rent because house prices never declined. Indeed, Ben Bernanke said US house prices have never declined. Of course, then they promptly did, but that is par for the course for the Federal Reserve. In 1929, there was a, a terrific buy-in and you could read articles in the Ladies Home Journal saying all you had to do to get rich was to buy stocks and hold on to them. And the same thing occurred in, in 2000, in the tech bubble. And the same thing occurred in the biggest bubble of all, which was Japan in 1989, when the Japanese market went to 65 times earnings. But in US history, I would say there's a bigger buy-in this time to the idea that prices never decline and that all you have to do is buy them um, than there has ever been. 
which suggests that when the decline comes, it will be uh, perhaps bigger and better than anything previously in U.S. history. You've talked about the tech bubble of 2000 that you famously really did anticipate, but you paid a price for getting out of the market at that place because other people continued to make money. People who were, were a value investor switched over. You stuck with it. At the same time, the longer that bubble goes, the bigger it gets. Does that represent the possibility to, for you to make more money when it does burst? If, if you can handle going short, getting out of the way, uh, yes, you can make a lot of money. This bubble, in part, if it is in bubble, as you describe it, uh, must in part be because of the amazing liquidity pumped into the, the world market, frankly. But certainly the Fed participated in that fully. We now, just the week, this week, have some uh, pretty staggering numbers on consumer prices, up over 6% annualized right now in the United States. To what extent will the pricking of this bubble come if the Fed needs to respond and really step on the, on the brake and maybe do it even a little abrupt, abruptly? Markets peak when inflation is low and profit margins are high. It, it's not about growth. They like GDP to be very stable. They hate it bouncing around. It makes portfolio managers nervous. And our model that goes back to 1925 explains almost all the ebbing and flowing of market, bull markets and bear markets. And uh, until, until June of last year, uh, starting in June of last year, uh, is the first time that inflation, the number one predictor since 1925, is ignored. Hmm. It, if you want to explain today's market level, yes, you have handsome profit margins. Every bull market it has a wonderful economy. Every bull market has a plentiful supply of liquidity. But every bull market before this one had low inflation. In order to explain today's market, you have to assume 100% ignoring of the rising inflation, which is quite remarkable. Yeah, We've I never seen anything like this. We've just hit 6% today. That would have been enough in any market since 1925. And for all I know, long before that, it would have been enough to have crashed the market. But this time, the faith in the Fed is so complete that when they say it's temporary, we believe it. The Fed, in my opinion, hasn't done a thing right since Paul Volcker, who was brilliant. All of the others have encouraged a, a chain series of really dangerous uh, asset bubbles. They, they rattle the economy. They're incredibly disruptive. The decline in 2000, 82 percent in the Nasdaq was the decline from 2000. The decline of the housing market all the way back to trend and below, dragging the world with it um, and all of the problems from bad mortgages and, and, and a 50 percent decline in the S&P. The, these have a terrible wealth effect. They make people feel poor and they make people spend less. It's the last thing you want. And yet they have not learned. They overstimulated to get to 2000. They overstimulated in the housing market. They got three or four percent more people to own houses in 2007 than had ever owned houses before. And the consequ consequences were dire. Mm -hmm. And uh, have they learned? Absolutely not. So in this time, they step into uh, COVID. And of course, you needed to stimulate. But did you need to throw this much money all over the world so that it flows into the stock market and creates, creates these meme stocks? this craziness that had Avis triple in one day <laughs> in, the, in the last week. And uh, why did it triple? Because in response to Tesla and Hertz and Tom Brady, et cetera, uh, Avis said, hey, dudes, we're going to buy some electric cars too. <laughs> Wham, it triples. You know, this is more extreme in scale and size um, of, of uh, market cap than anything that occurred in 1929, mm. even adjusted for the size of the economy.